Welcome biologists, today we're going to be looking at the stages of mitosis, the root tip squash and the significance of mitosis. So the significance of mitosis, why we need it, is it because it's used for asexual reproduction whereby an organism such as bacteria will produce many copies of itself without the use of a partner. It's used for repairing damaged tissues and cells and also growth of an organism. So that's the last specification point there. We're now going to move on to the stages of mitosis. But before I do so, we need to know what a chromosome is. Students often get mixed up here between a chromosome thinking that this is a chromosome and that's two stuck together. That isn't the case. They are both chromosomes, the one on the left and on the right. The main difference here is that the one on the right hand side here has two sister chromatids which contains double the genetic information. So I've got the same genetic information in one sister chromatid and exactly the same genetic information in the second sister chromatid. And this chromosome on the right hand side is ready for cellular division in mitosis. It's got double the genetic information ready for mitosis. The first stage is prophase. You can remember the stages of mitosis by PMAT. PMAT is a good way to remember those different stages and the order. So prophase is the first stage. You do need to be aware of what's happening to these uh, different things within inside a cell at the top right hand corner here throughout the process. In prophase, the main thing that happens here is the nuclear envelope breaks down, the chromosomes condense and the spindle fibers attach to the centromere on the chromosomes. Now the chromosomes condense, the way in which they do this is they wrap around proteins called histones, which make them more condensed, which makes the DNA more condensed. And you can see this dense DNA if you look down a light microscope and you do need to be able to identify a cell undergoing prophase under a light microscope, which you can see in these images here by those dark bodies on the inside of the cells. The next phase is metaphase, and this is where the chromosomes line up along the equator of the cell. Um, the spindle fibre is attached to the centromere of the chromosomes in this stage, and you can identify this from underneath a light microscope by seeing these dark bodies lining up along the equator of the cell. Anaphase is the next phase, and as you can see here, the chromatids are being pulled to opposite poles of the cell by the spindle fibres also known as the cytoskeleton, and this is due to the cytoskeleton or the spindle fibers contracting. Now in this phase here, anaphase, the centromere is breaking and therefore allowing the sister chromatids to be pulled to opposite poles of the cell. Now they are now known as chromosomes. In telophase, as you can see here, the plasma membrane begins pinching off in a process called cytokinesis. The nuclear envelope begins to form the chromosomes uncoil, so they're not condensed anymore, and the cell surface membrane undergoes cytokinesis. The spindle fibres will also start to break down in this. And again, this is really obvious to see in the light microscope. You can see two distinct stark blobs within what looks like the same cell. You may be able to see the cell membrane starting to fold inwards on that one as well. So this is the slide just explaining cytokinesis. You don't need to know it in a lot of detail. You just need to know it's the last end bit of telophase, which results in two genetically identical diploid daughter cells as a product of mitosis. This is an overview of the stages of mitosis or PMAT, if you want to pause it and have a read. But now we're now going to take a quick look at the root tip squash experiment. In the root tip squash experiment, what we do is we take a root tip, normally from garlic or an onion. It's important we use a root tip because in the root tip, which is growing, we should get mitosis occurring. So we take the sample from the end of a root. We'd, we'd normally heat it up with acid first of all, and this is used to break down the cell wall. This is done to break down the cell wall. We'd then squash it with a mounted needle and we'd stain the sample and place a cover slip over the top. Now, the reason why we stain a sam sample, this is a bit of a synoptic link here, linking back into cell ultrastructure. It, this is to provide contrast and to make the chromosomes more visible because it, we are particularly interested in looking at the chromosome structure and function in this particular part. It's important that we squash our sample because we want to make the sample as thin as possible so that light can pass through the sample when we put it under the light microscope. Now, you do need to be able to identify images taken from a light microscope. So if you want to pause it and have a quick go, you need to know why it is these phases as well. So have a think back and go back to the previous slides if needed. You may be asked to also calculate a mitotic index using this formula here. 
So if you want to pause it and have a go at that, but this is what I calculated. Again, this is very 